Hi guys, this is O Level Chemistry, paper 11, November 2022, question 11. Which compound has the most single bonds in one molecule? So we'll need to draw the compounds here. So here we have CH3 and CH3. So this is an alkane called ethane. And the number of single bonds here are 3 and 3, 6 and 1, 7. So we have 7 single bonds in ethane. Next is an alcohol, CH3, CH2, OH. A 2 carbon alcohol is called ethanol. So ethanol has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. It has 8 single bonds present in its structure. Moving on, we have CH3, CWH. A 2 carbon carboxylic acid is called ethanoic acid. In this ethanoic acid, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 6 single bonds. And we have a double bond here. So this will not be counted. Next, in D, we have CH3, CH, and then we have a CH2, which means these two carbon atoms will have a double bond between them. So in total, the number of single bond presents are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And this double bond will not be taken into account. So the structure with the greatest number of single bonds is ethanol, making option B the correct option for this question. Question 12. The formula of ammonium Metavendate is NH4VO3. It consists of ammonium ions and VO3 ions. So if ammonium ions are present, the charge on an ammonium ion is positive 1, which means the N ion VO3 will have a charge of negative 1 on it. Okay, what are the charges on these ions? Ammonium ion positive 1, vanadium ion negative 1. So option A is correct. B has 2, C has 3 and minus 4. D has plus 4 and minus 3. All of these options are incorrect, making option A the correct option for this question. Question 13. Which mass of oxygen gas combines with exactly 16 grams of sulfur to form sulfur dioxide? So, in the equation, sulfur combines with an oxygen molecule producing sulfur dioxide. So, the mass of sulfur is 32 and the mass of O2 is also 32 because 16 plus 16 is 32. And the mass of SO2 is 32 plus 32, which is 64. So according to this molar ratio, one mole of sulfur reacts with one mole of oxygen gas, producing, if the masses are concerned, then twice the mass of each of the components. So we have a ratio of masses here. So the question asks us 16 grams of sulfur. So if sulfur would be 16 grams, based on this ratio, the mass of oxygen will also be 16 grams and the mass of sulfur dioxide produced would be 16 into 2 is 32 grams. They have asked us the mass of oxygen. So the mass of oxygen would be 16, making option C the correct option for this question. Question 14. The atomic number of ruthenium is 44. One of the oxides of ruthenium is a black solid X. 5.79 grams of X contains 1.39 grams of oxygen. What is the empirical formula of X? Okay, you guys have to be very careful in this question because they have misled you in the beginning. The atomic number of ruthenium is 44. This is not its AR. You will have to refer to the period table for the AR of ruthenium, which is actually 101. So we will use the value 101 and we will not use the value 44 here. So now calculating the empirical formula, we have RU and we have oxygen. So the mass of oxygen is 1.39 grams. So mass of ruthenium would be total mass is 5.79. We remove 1.39 from it and then we divide this by 101 and we divide the mass of oxygen by 16. So 
Doing this, we have a value of 0 0.436 here and a value of 0 0.0869 here. So uh, 0 0.0436 actually. So this value 0 0.0436 is a smaller value. So we take out the simplest ratio by dividing both these values by 0 0.0436. So we get a whole number ratio of 1 is to 2, which means the formula of ruthenium oxide would be RuO2. And this makes option C the correct option for this question. Question 15. 250 cm cube of 1 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid reacts with an excess of sodium carbonate. Okay. So sodium carbonate is in excess. So this makes HCl the limiting reactant. Okay, the equation is shown. What is the volume of carbon dioxide produced when measured at room temperature and pressure? So, in this equation, 2 moles of HCl produces 1 mole of carbon dioxide. So, first we calculate the moles of HCl, then we calculate the moles of carbon dioxide, and then we calculate the volume of carbon dioxide. So this is a three-step process. Let's begin. First, we calculate the moles of HCl. Moles of HCl will be calculated using the concentration and volume. So it says that one mole per dm cube, which is one mole are present in 1000 cm cube. And out of this, we are using 250 cm cube. So how many moles would be present in 250 cm cube? This can be obtained by dividing 250 by 1000 and multiplying this value by 1. This gives us a value of 0 0.25 moles. After this, we know that the ratio of HCl is to CO2 is 2 is to 1. So if the moles of HCl is 0 0.25, that means the moles of CO2 would be half into 0 0.25, which will give us a value of 0 0.125 moles of CO2. Now we have moles of CO2 with us. We know that one mole of any gas occupies a volume of 24 dm cube and the moles of CO2 that we have obtained is 0 0.125. So 0 0.125 moles will have what volume? We can calculate this by dividing 0 0.125 by 1 and multiplying this value by 24. So we end up with a volume of 3 decimeter cube for the carbon dioxide produced. This makes option A the correct option for this question. Question 16. When excess equals barium chloride is added to 25 cm cube of 1 mole per dm cube sodium sulfate, a white precipitate of barium sulfate is formed. Equation is given and according to this equation, one mole of sodium sulfate produces one mole of barium sulfate because when an excess of barium chloride is used. So if barium chloride is in excess, the quantity of barium sulfate produced would depend on how much sodium sulfate is added because sodium sulfate becomes the limiting reactant here. Okay, so now the precipitate is filtered off, washed, dried and weighed. 5.36 grams of barium sulfate is obtained. Okay. What is the percentage yield of barium sulfate? Okay, so now we know that the molar ratio of sodium sulfate to barium sulfate is 1 is to 1. So we need to find out how much barium sulfate should have been produced because the quantity produces 5.36 grams as given in the question. So step 1 would be to calculate moles of Na2SO4. So moles of Na2SO4 can be calculated by using the concentration which is 1 mole per dm cube that means one mole are present in 1000 cm cube and we use 25 cm cube of this so if we have used 25 cm cube of this we need to find out how many moles we have used so this would become 25 divided by 1000 multiplied by 1 this gives us a value of 0 0.025 moles so if we have used 0 0.025 moles of sodium sulfate that means the moles of barium sulfate produced should also have been 0 0.025. But now we need to find out moles of barium sulfate because its mass is given. And the mass of barium sulfate is 
5.36 grams. So 5.36 grams mass upon MR. MR of barium sulfate is 233. So we divide 5.36 by 233 and we have a value of 0 0.023 moles. Now this value is smaller than the uh, moles of Na2SO4. So now we have the concept of percentage yield because the practical mass that was produced was 0 0.023 whereas the mass that was supposed to be produced, which is called the theoretical mass, was 0 0.025. And we need to find out the percentage, so we multiply this by 100. So we end up with a value of 92.01% yield. So this makes option C the correct option for this question. Question 17. Aqueous copper to sulfate is electrolyzed using inert electrodes. Okay. Which statement is correct? Copper is collected at the anode. Copper ions would be reduced. So if they are undergoing reduction, they will not be collected at the anode. Instead, they will be collected at the cathode. Next, hydrogen is collected at the cathode. No. Copper ions would be collected because copper is less reactive than hydrogen. So we end up with copper metal being deposited at the cathode. C, oxygen is collected at the anode. Anode is where oxidation takes place and uh, oxide ions from water or hydroxide ions from water rather are converted into oxygen. So this is correct. D, sulfur is collected at the cathode. There is no collection of sulfur in this process anywhere. At the cathode, we have collection of copper metal. So this makes option C the correct option for this question. Question 18. Concentrated aqueous sodium chloride is electrolyzed using inert electrodes. So we have the term concentrated here and we have chloride present. So at the anode, we will have chlorine gas being produced. How? Because oxidation takes place at the anode. So 2Cl minus will give us two electrons and Cl2 gas. And at the cathode, since sodium is present, hydrogen is less reactive than sodium. So we will end up with two moles of H positive ion accepting two moles of electrons producing hydrogen gas. So at the anode, we have chlorine being produced. And at the cathode, we have hydrogen gas being produced. Okay, so what does the question ask us? Which equation shows the reaction occurs at the anode? We have just made that reaction over here, the equation that takes place at the anode. So option A is coinciding with what we have just mentioned. So option A is the correct option for this question. Question 19. Which pair of equations correctly represent the reaction taking place at the anode and at the cathode during electrolysis of molten silver bromide? So if we have molten silver bromide, then the collection at the anode and the cathode would be that of silver metal and bromine liquid and gas, both, which have, because of the heat that is produced. So uh, at the cathode, we have reduction taking place, silver ions, Ag positive, will be accepting electrons producing Ag metal. And at the anode, we would have two Br negative ions giving off two moles of electrons and being converted into Br2. So we have already identified which equations we are getting. Now we have to link this to the correct options. So in option A, the equation for bromine is correct. And the uh, equation for silver is wrong because Ag does not have a two positive charge. In option B, we have two moles of Br negative ions, which is wrong. In option C, we have a correct equation for Br and we have a correct equation for silver as well. So option C is correct. In option D, the anode is having silver being reduced. Reduction does not take place at the anode, oxidation does. So we have found out why all the other options are incorrect. This makes option C.
the correct option for this question. Question 20. Which two processes are both endothermic? Okay. Option A has combustion in it. Combustion is always an exothermic process, never an endothermic process. So wherever combustion is mentioned, that option will be incorrect. So the other option in A is cracking. Cracking is an endothermic process because energy is required to break a higher fraction alkane into smaller, more useful fractions. And in B, we have fermentation. Fermentation is also an exothermic process. In option C, we have cracking, which is correct, and we have photosynthesis. Plants need energy to photosynthesize, yes. So both processes are endothermic in option C. In option D, photosynthesis is present, which is correct, but we have respiration. Respiration gives off energy. It is an exothermic process. So this makes option C the correct option for this question.